Look at us. It, 40, no, I actually hated it. They get kind of bad. It's grotesque, honestly. I can't stand the original for that money. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Today, if you couldn't tell by the title, I'm gonna be talking about my top 10 favorite creature feature movies. Yes, this is yet again another different background. On Monday, you saw that I was at my boyfriend's house in Santa Rosa visiting his family, and today I am visiting my family. So I'm back home in Chico. And I know that previously when I've been home, I've filmed in different rooms, different places. So you're probably just gonna see me in a bunch of different locations. I'm just trying to figure it out, try to figure out aesthetically what I like best. I think this is cute. You can see my mom's artwork and whatnot, but I, I don't know. We'll figure it out eventually. Also on Friday, I'll be in yet another location because you will see my pre-recorded Friday the 13th review video, which by the way, if you didn't know, I am reviewing every single one of the Friday 13th movies in the entire franchise, and this week is week five, so definitely subscribe if you're interested in that. Also, some other content that I plan on doing, obviously I'm home again, and so I'll be making more videos with my dad. A lot of you guys really like the videos that I made with my dad, and so we're definitely gonna be making one of those for next week. Also for next week, I found a couple of these little games on Instagram that other horror content creators have posted, so I'm just gonna throw some up on the screen here, but I'm definitely gonna be playing a few of these on my channel, and then with those, you are more than welcome to comment and follow along and answer the questions as well, but that'll be for next week. So for today's video, let's jump right into my top 10 creature feature movies. Actually, real quick, okay, these are all subject to change, except for maybe my top three to five. Those stay pretty consistent, but these are all, they change all the time. And you know, top 10 lists are kind of arbitrary, but this is my top 10 list right now. I just had to clarify. Okay, so now let's get into it, sorry. So I actually lied a little bit, there are 11 on this list, but one of them is just an honorable mention, and I'm gonna talk about that right now, and that is Bird Box. It's not my favorite, and I don't think I would ever put it on my top 10 list, but I think that it's definitely worth a one-time watch, and I wanna recommend it to you if you haven't seen it. I don't know about the rewatchability, but I thought it was a good movie, and it was pretty scary, and also the creatures are very unique, and you never see them aside from one moment where you kinda see some rough drawings of them, some sketches. Very interesting movie, really good acting, so I recommend watching watching it at least once. Okay, so number 10, gonna work my way up from number 10 all the way to my top creature feature movie. My number 10 is Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. You might not call this a creature feature, but the birds are essentially monsters in this movie, and so I would call it a creature feature. I don't really know what other kind of subgenre it would be, so I'm going with creature feature. <laughs> this movie came out in 1963, and it's one of my grandfather's favorite movies, so I actually grew up watching this movie, and it used to scare the daylight lights out of me, but it was one of the few kind of scary movies that I could watch without getting nightmares, so it sort of instantly became one of my favorites. Side note, I'm wearing an alien shirt today. It says, don't talk to strangers. It's really funny, but I thought it was, I thought this was appropriate for today's video. Okay, sorry. I enjoyed this movie because it's sort of an example of man versus nature, and nature in the end will definitely win. I know that people always say, oh, we're killing the planet, but no, if we continue to treat the planet this way, the, the planet will kill us. So I know the intention of Alfred Hitchcock wasn't to make commentary on the way we treat nature and whatever, but that's just kind of the way that I see it now, because it's still extremely rewatchable, even 40, no, 60 plus years later. Not to mention that Alfred Hitchcock really is the father of suspense and he's one of my favorite directors and I'm so happy that I was able to put one of his movies on this list. Even if you don't count it, even if you think that this movie is more of a thriller or whatever, you know, it's it counts, okay? The birds are the creatures. The rest of these movies will actually have creatures, so. Fun fact, I will insert pictures. I actually visited the church in Bodega Bay when I was visiting Mason where Alfred Hitchcock shot the birds. Incredible. Amazing. Okay, the next movie on this list, my number nine, is The Creature from the Black Lagoon in 1954. This one I haven't watched for a really long time, but I remember loving it when I was a kid. I think that this is absolutely a staple of this subgenre of horror, even if this movie itself wasn't technically horror. It is certainly a creature feature. This movie made me feel wary of small bodies of water, like lakes and ponds, when I was already wary of large bodies of water, like the ocean, because of Jaws. My favorite part of this movie is probably the fact that this creature is very interested and wants to 
be a part of perhaps and understand humanity and humans. I think it speaks a lot to the way that humans discover and then destroy, especially with nature or interesting animals. Like we can't just ever leave them alone and it's definitely shown in this movie. I also found this movie to be really beautiful and we all know the shot of the female lead swimming and then the monster coming up and mirroring her and swimming underneath her. Amazing, beautiful concept. And also this was the movie that inspired Guillermo del Toro to make The Shape of Water, which is very interesting. I do need to revisit this movie because it has been probably about 10 years since I've seen it, but the monster itself really burned itself into my memory, as well as all the beautiful imagery, and so that is why this has stayed on my top 10 list for basically my entire life watching these kind of movies. Moving on, this will come as no surprise to anybody at all, and that is John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. I mean, Obviously. I don't want to gush about this movie too much because anyone that's a fan of horror or anyone that's a fan of creature features will know and love this movie. I've heard other horror YouTubers talk about the practical effects of this movie and how this is one of their favorite movies of all time and whatnot. I actually just recently watched this movie for the very first time, maybe two weeks ago, and I totally agree. I mean, the practical effects were amazing and that's just not really done anymore What with how much CG is used and how far along CG has come. And I just don't think that CG will ever replace practical practical effects because to some extent we will always be able to tell what is CG and what isn't. Also, usually I need to watch a movie at least a couple of times to sit on it, meditate, you know, gather as much as I can from the movie and then decide if it's gonna be on one of my top 10 lists or if it's gonna be one of my favorites. But, but this was just an instant favorite. This automatically made the number eight spot on my top 10 list of creature features of all time. So that is saying something about this movie. It might work its way up once I watch more movies from this subgenre, but we'll see. I think that the whole concept of the movie is really what drew me in because it's definitely a combination of the movie Alien and Invasion of the body snatchers. So the plot mixes those two concepts and it creates something totally unique. And those two movies are some of my favorites as well. So the fact that it reminded me of both of those and mixed the two concepts so well is definitely why it already made my top 10. Also, before I move on, I have to say that my favorite part of the movie was when the guy's stomach imploded to reveal giant teeth and it bit the other guy's arms off. Great moment, love it. So my number seven on this list is Life from 2017. So now we're getting out of the oldies and it's more contemporary stuff. And surprisingly, the first time I watched this movie, and I think maybe the only time I watched this movie, I actually hated it because from the trailer, I thought that I was getting kind of an action space movie with a creature involved, but no, this movie was basically full-blown horror. The alien creature was really unique. I can't say I've really seen anything like it before. I think that you could compare it to The Blob. I think that movie came out in the 50s or something, but I think it's kind of similar to The Blob because the alien creature in this movie, it collects organic matter in the form of blood. It drinks the human's blood to become larger. So kind of similar to the blob. I don't know, comment down below, let me know if you agree. But the reason that I call this movie a horror and not thriller or anything else is because of the body horror. It is all over this movie. It is so... <sighs> It's grotesque, honestly. And there were some mo moments that I had to plug my ears because of the sound design and just how disgusting the stuff that they were implying was, just in, with crunching and slurping. And it was just really, really effective for me. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I don't do body horror very well. I think it's great. I think it's an effective tool in horror and certainly gets under my skin, but just it gets under my skin a little bit too much for comfort. But I love the actors in this movie. It has Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds, two of my favorites. So because of how effective it was and the fact that I'm so desensitized and this movie still scared the daylights out of me and the fact that the creature was incredibly unique, that is why this makes number seven on my list. So definitely check it out if you haven't. Number six on this list probably will not surprise you either. It is A Quiet Place from 2018. Again, conceptually and visually one of the most unique monsters I've ever seen. Also phenomenal acting in this movie of John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, two of my favorite actors, and the children did amazing as well. What I really commend this movie on is the fact that narratively they were able to do so much with such little dialogue, which is was probably definitely a challenge for John Krasinski. I believe he 
wrote and directed this movie, but he took on that challenge and from it came this amazing movie. I love when directors challenge themselves because, you, you know, high risk, high reward. I want to talk about the sequel for a little bit because I am a little bit confused. Apparently it follows a different group of people, but from the same world. However, in the trailer, it follows the same family. So I feel like it might just be a tease to get people to come see the second movie that are only invested in the story of the original cast. However, my prediction is that we will only get Emily Blunt and the kids for maybe the first 10 to 15 movies and then we'll somehow segue into another story, but I don't know. I hope that I'm totally wrong and that we follow Emily Blunt and the kids for the entirety of the movie, but that's not what I've heard from other sources, so I don't know. I just, I hope I'm wrong. Comment down below if you know anything about that. Number five on this list, of course, is Alien from 1970. Maybe I should have done a separate video dedicated all to alien movies because it kind of, uh, they kind of intersect and so it's hard to say because there were a lot more alien movies that I wanted to put on this list. However, I feel like the original alien is definitely a creature feature while some other alien movies are a little bit more nuanced and you don't really see the aliens as frequently so I feel like that's kind of a separate thing. You probably already knew that this was gonna be on this list, but I actually have not talked about this movie on my channel yet. This is one of those genre-defining movies that will be rewatchable till the end of time. The practical effects were really just as good back then as they are now, and they hold up so incredibly well, and I think that that is why this movie will last for eons to come. So narratively, you not only have this alien, but you also have this robot and then strenuous relationships between all these men and Sigourney Weaver and it kind of makes some commentary on sexism in the workforce and things like that kind of like Silence of the Lambs not really but kind of and I don't know Sigourney Weaver just kicks ass and it's really awesome to see a female lead in an action movie like that but also what works for this movie is definitely the suspense I think that it makes the scares so much more effective and I am not really one for jump scares but they just worked so well in this movie and they just made sense. Sometimes jump scares are really just cheap. They're just for the shock value and just to try to find a way to scare the audience and make it a horror movie and whatever. But in Alien, I think that jump scares are actually warranted because it was this creature that was able to stow itself away and hide and do, you know, all these crazy high intelligence things. So I feel like the jump scares were definitely warranted. I'm not really gonna talk about the sequels because they get kind of bad. <laughs> but the first Alien movie, amazing. We love. Number four on this list, you might be mad at me that it's not up higher, but number four is Jaws from 1975. Of course. Did you guys all already know that I was gonna put this on my list high up there? Yeah, I think you probably did. I think that this movie should be on everyone's favorite creature feature list. I don't know that there is really a separation between shark movies and creature features and what that line is, but this movie centers around a creature and it is the shark and it's a monster shark at that. So, I don't know, you tell me, but this is gonna stay on my creature feature list. I think that this movie definitely helped to reshape horror because it changed the game. It changed horror from being a genre that relied on pretty cheesy practical effects to actually very well done practical effects and real genuine suspense and pure terror. Also, might I just say, look at us, look at us. Just two people that were afraid to get back into the ocean after we saw this movie. For a long time, probably, right? Am I wrong? You're gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? That is effective horror, okay? To make you anxious and question real life and question the actual ocean, even though you know that this shark is just a thing of the movies. And we all know damn well, or well, I hope we all know damn well, that shark attacks are usually on accident and the statistic is somewhere in the one out of 11 million something chances I don't know, I'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, so there's basically no chance of us ever getting attacked by a shark, and yet this movie makes that fear so visceral and real. No matter how irrational it is, I think that we will always think of Jaws at least a little bit, maybe in the back of our minds every time we go to the beach. That's just how much this movie really changed the world. Now, number three on this list you might not have heard of if you're more of just a classic horror fan, and that is It Follows. If you haven't heard of this one, Oh boy. I'm gonna do a synopsis for those of you that haven't heard of it. So It Follows came out in 2014. After carefree teenager Jay sleeps with her new boyfriend Hugh for the first time, she learns that she is the latest recipient of a fatal curse that has passed from victim to victim via sexual intercourse. Death will creep toward her as either a friend or a stranger. 
Jay's friends don't believe her seemingly paranoid ravings in the, until they too begin to see the phantom assassins and band together to help her flee or defend herself. This is truly one of the scariest films I think I've ever seen purely for the concept and the creature itself. It's definitely the fact that this entity is completely unexplained. Also, it never runs. It never comes at you quickly. It is just walking. It walks toward you slowly, but it never stops. And you can never stop it. You just have to give it to someone else and hope that they stay alive and that they pass it on and that it keeps getting passed on until eventually you're safe. But then even in that case, they could just kill everyone and then eventually get back to you. So it's sort of this thing that even if you pass it on, it's always gonna linger and you're always gonna be scared the rest of your life. Also, it can look like literally anyone. It can be any type of human. It could be your best friend. It could be the stranger just walking across the street towards you. You don't know. It's also very artfully done, uh, very tastefully shot. I really, really, really like this movie and I highly recommend it. Number two on this list is It from 2017. Yes, the one from 2017. Honestly, I can't stand the original. <laughs> this movie is shot more beautifully than I think any other horror movie I've seen. Uh, well, okay, aside from any Gore Verbinski film like The Ring or Cure for Wellness, aside from those, it's just immaculately shot and it's shot with such high quality. It's amazing. Aside from the technical stuff, I think that the child actors that they chose to portray these roles were amazing. I don't think that they could have done any better. And the fact that all of these kids were funny too and could deliver lines with such charisma, I feel like that's really hard to find. And also in it chapter two with the adults that they cast to mirror these younger kids, I have never seen anything more accurate and not just with looks, but also with their personalities, just these actors, and they matched so well. But I don't wanna get into the second one very much because I think that that is going to be in a separate video where I talk about my unpopular horror opinions. That is probably gonna come out in the next couple weeks, probably not next week. But let's talk about the monster, okay? Pennywise is one of the scariest monsters I've ever seen. I don't know if we all collectively have this innate fear of clowns. I didn't think that I had one, but then I thought about it more. And of course I saw this movie, but I thought about it more and clowns as a concept, I just don't believe in. <laughs> clowns are very weird and frightening. The fact that they dress themselves in paint and giant shoes and stuff, but they're supposed to entertain kids and whatever, but they look so frightening. They literally, clowns look like monsters themselves, okay? That's why there have been so many killer clown movies and stuff like that. But sorry, getting back to Pennywise, the fact that he can also transform himself into your worst fear and he just has this telepathic ability to reach into your brain and know what you fear the most and exploit you for it and then eat your fear. You know, conceptually as humans, we cannot understand that. He's just this quite unfathomable creature and it's, it's a lot to process, <laughs> but I love it so much. And I think that it really did a lot to help breathe new life into horror, even though I know that it's a remake and I know that we're completely and totally in the era of remakes and sequels and dragging out franchises for all just every last drop that we can get out of them for that for that money but i think that what it did for the horror genre it proved that horror movies can have a good well thought out and constructed narrative they can be shot beautifully they can be cast perfectly well with amazing acting it just did a lot for horror and i feel like horror well it was kind of in the middle of this big rebirth you know these past couple of years and now with covid and stuff and production on halt i don't know what's gonna happen but you know horror is doing really well right now okay number one on this list the moment you've all been waiting for or i mean maybe i don't know but the moment i have all been Wait, what? Number one on this list is Jurassic Park from 1993. Maybe this isn't horror, but you can't, you, are you gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that when those kids were sitting in the kitchen, scared out of their minds because the raptors were about to find them, you're gonna tell me that that was not a horror scene? And you're gonna tell me that when the T-Rex clamped down on the guy's body and ate him off of the toilet seat that that was not horror? Are you... We were scared. That movie was scary. But we're talking about creature features, right? So let's talk about the dinosaurs. Who else was doing it like Steven Spielberg, okay? Who else made a life-size, anatomically correct, Tyrannosaurus Rex 
for his movie. Who? Okay, no one's doing it like that anymore. And you know what? We all love dinosaurs because it's crazy. How were these giant things on earth that were they were here millions of years ago, okay? And they all got wiped out. And the, the most that we can learn from them is just from their bones. They're just these vastly fascinating creatures and it's so cool to see them brought to life and to see that the effects were done so well that they hold up perfectly to this day. I just cannot commend Spielberg highly enough for the choices that he made in this movie. And in recent years, he's made some really questionable stuff like the BFG and Ready Player One. I mean, those were just kind of big letdowns for me, especially because Spielberg used to be one of my favorite directors, what with Indiana Jones and E.T. and stuff like that. Sorry, I just, I need to keep circling back to the movie itself. Let's talk about the acting. Actors were amazing in this movie. We know it, okay? We all know it, can't be disputed. And we have crazy Jeff Goldblum who, what is he even doing now? Have you guys seen his show on Disney Plus, The World According to Jeff Goldblum? Because the way that man's mind works, it's really, it's truly fascinating. But anyways, we have Jeff Goldblum in this movie we have Lena Dunham, et cetera, et cetera. But then also the child actors, I've mentioned before, you have to have good child actors or your movie will be And the child actors were phenomenal in this movie, but this has been a long video and I need, to, I need to start wrapping it up, but I will say this. I don't know if this is a controversial opinion, but I also want to put Jurassic World at the top of this list as well. I mean, maybe it's kind of technically an honorable mention. It's not really on the list, but it's kind of, you know, it's up there. It's one of my favorites, okay? So I don't know if this is controversial, but I think that the new Jurassic World was amazing and I liked it almost as much as the original. It definitely doesn't really come too close to the original because the original was just infinitely more terrifying and amazing to me, but Jurassic World I think was amazing too. I think the only reason I didn't like it as much is probably the CG, because I don't think that any of the dinosaurs in this movie were real or practical, which is fine, you know, because the CG looks really amazing. It definitely looks very real, but you can tell, you know? And in the original movie, th there was no disputing it, okay? That T-Rex was real as fuck. All right, I gotta wrap it up. This video is probably gonna be like a half hour long, but that's okay. Definitely subscribe. I post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at five o'clock PM. And I have been posting on my vlog channel actually twice a week lately. So definitely subscribe over there. Comment down below if you have any requests for videos and stuff that you'd like to see and stay tuned for my new videos. I hope that you enjoyed this one and I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye.